Welcome to the new home of Tips from a Shipwright. Uh, this is our new space right here. We've got a little bit going on already, but I'm going to show you the whole shop and uh, go around it a little bit and show you my equipment and different things. And this is just another skiff that I've built here, and we're going to finish it up and get on to another project. We're going to build our 23-foot V-bottom skiff in this space right here. I've waited uh, many years, actually, since I've designed that boat for the proper place to build it you know, and the possible market for it and all those different things. And it looks pretty good right about now. I'm kind of proud of that design. So that's one thing we're going to do. But uh, I'm going to take you around, uh, you know, Halsey and I are pretty proud of this place because we can get back to shooting a bunch of really nice videos, a series like everybody would love to see, you know, some unrelated things about shopping, or, you know, all kinds of different things like that. But we're also planning on doing some more traveling you know, to uh, actually we're going to go to Thailand, I believe, and maybe Greece. So, you know, we're working that stuff out, and uh, it's been a little bit of a project getting going here, but we're going now, and the first thing that I'm going to do, or one of the very first things I'm going to do is do a drawing board video again. I'm going to draw the plans for this skiff right here, and uh, I also have a little cardboard model there that I made of it. I have never drawn the plans to a skiff like this. So that's one of the things we're going to do so you guys can either obtain those plans or you'll be able to figure out how I did it. And uh, I, haven't doing, I haven't been doing that many drawings lately, so it's kind of like I'm going to learn it at the same time that you learn it. I'm going to go over a list of things on the table right there that you guys are going to need to have in order to uh, get these, uh, uh, these drawings accomplished at the same time that I'm going to do it. So we're going to do that. And I'm going to show you my new Patreon board. Now, we put this board together to thank some of our earliest patrons. They've been sticking with us right along, and we're really thankful for that. So they're really special people to us, and we decided that we would put their name up on the board right here. But, uh, you know, we also want to thank all of our audience because it's been terrific. The comments have been terrific. It's really fun for us to read the comments and try to respond to some of them, you know, the best we can. So, you know, you can look this up on Patreon.com, and uh, I wouldn't be at all surprised if you guys could figure out how to get your name up there on the wall with these guys right here. Now, let me give you a little introduction to my drawing room right here. This is my little drawing board. It's three feet by two feet, and I've got it on top of another table here so that I can put all the things that I don't need to use on this drawing board alongside. It's very convenient to have a table like that. I'm just showing you a little bit of the setup. It's nice if you're sitting on a stool, too, because you can draw, you can reach your whole board like this, and you can also stand up and do the same exact thing because the board's the right height for both. So that, that just makes it a little bit easier than sitting in a chair doing it. Now, I wanted to show you that the first thing we're going to do is be drawing a set of plans to this right here. This is just a cardboard model of a skiff, the skiffs that I've always built. And uh, they all are a little bit different shape. There's none two of them exactly the same. But what I'm going to do is show you how this is drawn, how you would arrive at the stations and different things like that, and uh, produce a set of plans. So a set of plans will be available for this skiff from now on. And uh, you know, you can, uh, from, from what you learn on this drawing board and what I learn uh, together with you, you'll be able to draw things like this very simply, because this is like the simplest shape there is to draw. And then we're going to move on eventually to drawing this shape. This is a V-bottom uh, skiff. So this one's a little bit more complicated to draw and a little bit more complicated to build. I believe that this is the shape that people were after years ago when they asked skiff builders like myself if they would, could or would build a V-bottom skiff. And uh, really no one that I know ever built one at all because the construction of it is uh, something that I've finally been able to conquer. Now, there weren't any V-bottom skiffs that I know of until they came out with plywood years ago. And uh, then they made a lot of unsuccessful attempts to make commercial boats with plywood in a V-bottom shape. And they just never worked out really well. They were too limber and everything else. So, you know, this is the first attempt really to build a commercial style boat very much in the style of a flat bottom skiff. It's got, got a cross plank sole. You know, it's got skiff sides with wide planks. It's framed like a skiff. It looks like a skiff. 
and it is a skill. But that's coming up. That's going to be a series that we're going to do. And uh, let me put that away. Now, if you guys are going to be drawn along with me, you'll have to understand some of the things that you'll need. It's really no extensive list here at all, but uh, I've got paper here that's two feet by 18 inches drawn paper. You'll have to get some of that. I, I have a little drafting machine here, but you don't really need one. To replace that, you can use an aluminum yard stick with a couple of spring clamps. But uh, when I start out, you have to make a baseline. So that does the same exact thing. With this, it moves up and down and stays exactly parallel all the time. With that, you have to make sure that it's sitting on the original line that you put it alongside of it so that you can draw verticals with a triangle. So you can use a, a, a straight edge like this and a couple of spring clamps. You need to have a triangle like this so you can draw verticals. This is my scale rule. I've got some tape to tape the paper down. This is another scale rule that broke in half on me, and I use that even more than that because it's just easier. It doesn't take up so much space on the table, right? So uh, the other thing I've got here is some spline weights. You don't need spline weights like this. You can use anything, you know, a cup full of sand, you know, uh, you know the tips from a shipwright cups with, with weights, uh, nuts and bolts in it or anything you want because you just push it up against the, uh, the uh, spline right here. Now this is a little piece of plastic that's actually from a Venetian blind right out of my house. And I'll show you, this is one of the Venetian blinds right here and I ripped it in th thirds on a table saw and it is the right stiffness. It doesn't want to move the spline weights around, yet it's nice and tame. You can hold it down wherever you don't have weights and continue your pencil line. And uh, I, I just think everything that I've got right here works out really well. The, uh, you have to have an eraser, uh, an eraser shield, which is just a little piece of uh, metal like this that you can use to uh, go alongside a line and erase things very delicately. Uh, erase a couple of pencils. I think I've got a six in there, which is pretty hard, and down to a five uh, or a four. So, you know, a, a, a hard pencil draws a nice narrow line, and it doesn't make a mess. So, then you have to have a brush, because you can't wipe the things off the table with your hand. You'll smudge the drawing. So, you have a brush, you have a little pencil sharpener, I've got another uh, straight edge right here or another batten, but it's got lead in it, so it takes a bend and stays there. So that's pretty neat because making curved lines and different things, that could become useful. Not in these drawings, these first drawings that I'm going to do. You also need a pair of dividers so that you can pick dimensions up from one of the views of a drawing and transfer them to the other without taking a measurement. You know, as long as the two things are the same in each drawing, that's all you need to have. So you don't need to know measurements all the time. So a pair of dividers like that, that you can adjust very easily and then lock down. And then it's got like a micro adjustment right here so that uh, you can get nice accuracy with it. You need that. And uh, really, that's pretty much all you need to generate drawings like this. Now, I haven't been drawing in a while, so like I said before, I'm going to be learning as we go and probably making a few mistakes and things like that. And that's okay because uh, the outcome will still come out right. So it's going to be pretty interesting. Uh, drawing the V bottom is going to be more interesting, I think. And then I want to show you some drawings that I have laid out on my layout table over here that I did when I was a very young kid of a round bilge boat. And I kind of want to get involved in drawing round bilge boats or or doing plans and lofting for round bilge boats. You know, I've always done that my whole life long, but basically, I'm into this drawing stuff right here. This is fun for me. This is something I started when I was a young, young kid, and, uh, you know, I was always envious of the really, really uh, great architects like Alden and so many others, but, uh, you know, these are, these are very simple things. This is not the way things are done today. You know, it would be done with a computer and all those kinds of things, but, you know, I'm helpless with that, and uh, I think this has actually got advantages, you know. When you're drawn alongside a baton like this, you get to actually feel the shape of it, and you get to look at it from different ends and different things like that that, that just kind of make it uh, uh, more difficult, I think, in a computer to accomplish the same things. If I want to make a micro-adjustment in shape, it's that easy. 
you know, so I don't know how to do the other stuff. This is what I know how to do right here, and I'm going to be showing you what I know about it. Now I'm going to show you my layout table right here. This is just a table to stretch plans out so that you can take a look at them. You can have other people looking at them with you. You know, sometimes you have people all the way around, but uh, it's at a different height than the drawing table so that you can stand and look down at it, really. It's no sitting, really, at this table for any purposes. And uh, this is just a drawing right here of an 18-foot V-bottom skiff. This is the lines drawings only, not a set of plans. And there's some drawings that I had made years ago of V-bottom skiffs. So that's what we're going to be building is a V-bottom skiff that's 23 feet long. It's not exactly the same boat as this, but the lines drawings will look somewhat similar to this when I get around to drawing them. So the only other thing I'd like to show you real quickly is this book right here. This is Howard Chappelle's book on boat building. I learned my trade out of this book right here. This is the first book I ever read, and uh, it's been with me my whole life. You can learn some incredible stuff out here. I'm going to be going into that book on different projects and showing you how I learned some of the things I've learned, but that'll come up later on. Now here we are in the back of the shop where we've got some lumber stacked up here. We've got it all stick it off in between to keep it nice and flat and everything, and uh, I just wanted to show you some of it. The very bottom pieces right here have been milled out already, surfaced, and they've been actually fit together. They're 27 feet long Atlantic white cedar, and it's almost flawless. It's the sides of the new 23-footer that we're going to be building. So the other pile of lumber is really Atlantic white cedar also. It hasn't been milled out or surfaced, but uh, I believe there's enough lumber right there to either build one, at least one, but maybe two work skiffs around 18 feet long. So we've got a little bit of lumber back here. I, mean, I don't have any oak right here right now, but uh, we have some, and I've got some racks up here with some fur and some battens and different things on it. Right over here, I've got a little bandsaw and a drill press and my bench grinder on a very portable little bench right here. I've got some supplies over here and a few tools. I don't have many tools, a couple of planes and my power tools. That's pretty much all I really need to build a boat like this. And, uh, you know, I don't have massive amounts of tools like a lot of people do. I only have the tools that I really need. So. You know, and I love them, so there they are. And uh, this is the stem right here, a laminated stem for the 23-footer. And on the table saws right here, I've got the in whales for the skiff I'm building, the rails for it, the guards, and a few other things. And, uh, you know, I love this setup like this. I always set myself up like this with two table saws because I've got a heavy-duty one here and a little bit lighter-duty one there, but they're the same height so I can rip off one onto the other, and it acts like a workbench. When I lay something out there, I can clamp it down. I don't have a woodworking bench with a bench vise and all that kind of stuff. I use these two table saws for like a workstation, and then I can rip and do the other things I have to do. I've got a little jointer over here that's portable, and a portable planer, and my uh, phase converter up there that operates this stuff because this is three phase, and I've only got single phase coming into the building. So we got that to operate properly. I've got some uh, lumber over here. And uh, what I'm going to do next is show you this skiff and what we're up to here and how why it's a little different than the other one that we built on video. This skiff is 18 feet long, or 18 feet around the gunnel, the way I used to always measure a skiff. And everyone else that I ever knew measured a skiff that way, 18 feet around the gunnel be about 17 foot six or something like that. But uh, this is quite a skiff right here. It's the same width as the skiff that we did on video, but uh, like I say, it's longer. It's a beefy skiff. This thing's made all of white oak. It's got all white oak in it, which is, this is the first skiff I've ever built with white oak. They were all built with yellow bark. And uh, that's, a, that's a species of red oak that I've always used for skiffs, and everybody else that I've ever seen build skiffs used yellow bark as well. White oak's awful heavy, and uh, today they've got the horsepower to push a boat. Doesn't matter how heavy it is, so, you know, we've got white oak in this one. It's bronze fastened. It's got a little bit different shear than the other boat that we built, but it's built with the same exact procedure. You know, it doesn't have a set of plans actually that it was built from. It's built from a procedure that we used to call the old man's method. And I can go into that a little bit more with you later on, but uh, there's information in our other videos about it. Now, 
you know, this is really a pretty skiff. It's got a pretty sheer to it. We've got it sanded up here a little bit. We're just about ready to throw some paint on it. We've got to complete the gunnels. We're going to be getting into this just a tiny bit, finish it up in the shop. Our next project actually is building the 23-footer. We're going to do that right here. And uh, we've collected all the material for it. We've got almost everything we need. And I'm ready to go. So, you know, you know it's just something that I've been planning actually for years. And, you know, I could have started a long time ago, but it wasn't the right situation. You know, today we're going to be able to trap it all on video. We're going to be able to show it to the world. I'm proud of the design work. It's kind of like the stuff I like to do because it's a little bit different. Uh, I designed the procedure, you know, the construction of it, the shape of it, everything about it. So it's kind of, it pleases me and I hope it really pleases you. So we're going to be getting back to that and we've got all kinds of other things planned. You know, like I said, we're going to do some traveling, we're going to do some chainsaw safety stuff. We're going to be in the woods, we're going to be in the sawmills at the drawing table, all kinds of other videos about sharpening, different things like that, and uh, who knows what's going to pop up, but uh, you know, we're open to pretty much anything, and we're looking forward to our Patreon page working out really well. Uh, the owner, will meet the owner of this boat. This boat was sold before I even started building it. Uh, we do take uh, orders for boats like this, but uh, our next concentration is going to be again and again, it's going to be that 23-foot V-bottom skiff.